Hello, my name is Eric Williams, and welcome to our uh, new technical series, uh, Tips and Tricks um, for Managing UCS uh, with PowerShell and System Center. I want to introduce the panel that I have with me today. I'll introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Eric Williams. I'm a technical marketing engineer for Cisco. My focus at Cisco is really focusing on systems management, automation, and monitoring uh, of UCS. Let's go ahead and go from left to right here, um, and I'll have Chris Duck introduce himself first. Hi, I'm Chris Duck. I'm an infrastructure architect at VHA. Uh, we're a healthcare company in Irving, Texas, and I'm responsible for um, working on our infrastructure. Okay, thank you. Chris Shockey? Hi, I'm Chris Shockey. I'm with Cisco Advanced Services, focused on Microsoft Technologies, and currently stationed at Microsoft Corporation. Thanks. I'm Jason Shaw? Hi, my name is Jason Shaw. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco, and I also focus on systems management, uh, our XML API, automation, and certainly our integrations with uh, Microsoft System Center. Jeff Foster? Hi, my name is Jeff Foster. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Cisco Systems. I'm focused on systems management, uh, specifically for uh, standalone C-series servers. And last but not least, Joe Martin. Uh, good morning, Joe Martin. I'm a consulting systems engineer with Cisco, and uh, I work on the pre-sales side of the operation, and uh, my customer happens to be Microsoft. Well, thank you. So I just wanted to give a quick agenda of what we're planning to talk about today. This is going to be a very you know, good, action-packed hour. We're planning to talk a bit about uh, UCS and, and um, some of the tools we have to manage UCS with uh, System Center. So we'll talk a bit about um, a lot of the tools that Cisco has been developing specific for System Center, as well as our uh, PowerShell libraries for, for UCS. So I want to give a quick overview of, of UCS and, and, um, and our API bit to start with myself. Um, so UCS, uh, you know, use with UCS Manager was built on a, uh, some t uh, one of the big pillars was about manageability and really focusing on having uh, everything be able to be integrated and managed from a single point uh, for that entire subsystem. So we really wanted to focus on managing servers from a single point of view, being able to you know, use that single point of view, that UCS management software, to manage your, your fabric interconnects, your, um, your blades, your chassis, your rack mount servers, and fixes that are communicating or connected with it, and be able to manage that holistically through one piece of software called UCS Manager. And one of the big focuses that we really wanted to, to change with that is making it fully integrated. If you look at a lot of uh, Cisco's competition, they have a lot of different points to be able to uh, have a customer or partner to integrate with, which makes integration much harder because you have to integrate with a lot of different APIs. With UCS specifically, um, we really wanted to focus on having a single API and federate all of that management uh, management plane into one different area, which is, again, where we decided and, and we really focus on with UCSM. So UCS Manager is that single point of management to manage all of your hardware configuration to do the monitoring and, and, and want, monitor the, the health and, uh, of the environment. With that particular management software, we have that 100% open XML API that we use internally with our GUIs and our CLIs to manage um, that particular piece of hardware. And we provide externally to be able to manage UCS. So what we've done with that API is develop uh, today, we've, we've developed some SDKs and management packs and integration modules uh, to use that API in other things outside of this UCS manager. So a good example of that is we have a PowerShell module, uh, PowerShell SDK that we've developed um, it's called UCS Power Tool, and we can manage and manipulate our, our servers managed by UCS Manager. Uh, in the future, we're going to be able to manage uh, um, UCS Central through its XML API with PowerShell, as well as our standalone rack mount servers, um, be able to manage those with PowerShell through its API. Secondly, um, we, we've used our PowerShell library to manage uh, and monitor uh, our, uh, our UCS domains and systems inside of a lot of the system center tools as well. So we've developed um, you know, management packs to integrate 
into System Center Operations Manager to grab that default information, the inventory information about UCS, managed servers, or standalone rack mount servers, and, and bring that holistic view into System Center, as well as doing extensions into things like System Center Virtual Machine Manager, so you can see what hypervisors are running on what uh, UCS domains and whatnot, as well as enabling you to orchestrate your environment uh, with System Center Orchestrator to be able to manage your, rack, your standalone rack mount servers and your UCS managed servers as well. And then in the future, we're working on a system center configuration uh, manager integration to do that bare metal deployment of, uh, from, from bare metal to actually having an operating system fully configured and running on top of it. So let's, let's start with uh, talking about Power Tool for UCSM. So I want to ask you a few questions, Dacian. Uh, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, UCS Power Tool for UCSM. Would you mind giving a quick overview of what it is and, and what are the most common ways to use it? Sure. Yep. It is built on a .NET SDK. Uh, and, and as you said, you know, we have an open XML API. And as a result, we have schema files that we use for uh, generating, for the most part, automatically um, our greater than 1,700 commandlets that we have. Uh, that XML API, again, is open. It's federated, so uh, you know, we have a single place to go and drive configuration and change across the entire UCS domain up to 160 servers. And, uh, and re uh, realistically, just about anything that you see in, in our UCS manager GUI and CLI is automatable uh, using this PowerShell library. Uh, well, 1,700 commandlets is a pretty large number to, to come up to speed on. What's the best way for a new person to start learning how to utilize those commandlets? Because that's a pretty steep learning curve, in my opinion. That's a, a great question. And uh, one of the commandlets, one of the custom commandlets that was developed and built into this PowerShell library is called Convert to UCS. And I have a short uh, video here that we can use to demonstrate that. So how does Convert to UCS commandlet work in the back end? It's fantastic. So you bring up your UCS manager GUI. Um, you, you know, fire up your PowerShell uh, session and run the convert to UCS commandlet and it will monitor the Java uh, log file and look for changes that are being sent to the far end. So as you can see here I've got convert to UCS commandlet running and when I go back into my user interface and perform any change in this case I'm going to create a VLAN, VLAN 22 with an ID of 22. Hey Jason, you're not sharing so if you could share your, uh, your video that would be great. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Great. Sorry about that. So here we are firing up convert to UCS commandlet. And again, this runs in the background. It monitors the Java log file. And as we go back into our UI and perform a change, in this case, uh, creating VLAN 22 with an ID of 22, uh, that's being monitored on the back end. And what comes back into the convert to UCS commandlet session is the exact PowerShell commands and any arguments required to recreate that, you know, that task. I can literally copy and paste this text, um, you know, edit the VLAN ID, edit the VLAN name, and send this right back into the system in order to create a new VLAN. So that gives you uh, pretty much instant gratification where you can do something in the GUI and be able to then get the exact code to be able to reproduce that particular action. Yep, absolutely. Um, for folks that maybe have never used PowerShell before, this is a great way to not only sort of get an introduction to PowerShell, but learn how to automate tasks in UCS very easily. And the concept applies to really any task in UCS. And, and you can see, uh, moving this video forward, I'm using the same concept to uh, create a boot policy and capture that information. And you might notice this comes back in the form of a transaction. Um, transactions are great in, in the UCS platform. You can send basically one, you know, one document to the system, uh, but actually invoke a lot of change as a result. I'm making uh, parent objects and child objects in this case. The boot policy itself, you know, defining the boot order uh, that the server will boot with, and all of the sort of sub-objects defining local disks that I may boot from or iSCSI uh, targets that I may boot from. No, that's great. So you could basically, for folks that have been using UCS for quite a while, they could learn how to, uh, to you know, they can use the GUI to, as a learning tool to be able to script and automate uh, you know, items that they would want to be able to, you know, orchestrate, uh, you know, either through scripts or into things like System Center orchestrator. 
Absolutely. You know, uh, and I, again, we have a large number of automatically generated commandlets that come right from our, our XML schema files. <clears throat> There's certainly a number of other tools that we've handwritten, convert to UCS commandlet being one of those. Uh, some new features of convert to UCS commandlet I'd like to hit on really quick is that you can run this against a backup file and basically generate all the resulting PowerShell um, commands to recreate that environment. I can, you know, again, take a, 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 com a config all backup of a live system and actually generate all the commands again to sort of recreate that environment, uh, perhaps in my lab or, uh, or on my platform emulator. No, that's great. Um, there's a question from, uh, from you know, the folks listening that asks, is there a web page or uh, something that can, you know, can contain all of the, uh, you know, commands uh, that they want to reference? You know, so I can answer that myself, or you can answer that. Um, uh, there's there's a great commandlet that can help you learn other, com you know, what's what's available in our module as well. You can do uh, get dash UCS commandlet meta or, or metadata, and it will show you every commandlet for every you know uh, type of object you want to manipulate or or create or add or modify. So that's a great way to learn, as well as we have really good. Um, you know, some quick start guides to recommend, you know, which, which commandlets to, to utilize and, and such. That's all available on our, uh, on Cisco.com where you can download the software. Okay. Hey, Jason, what are some of the common use cases that, for PowerTool? Well, certainly, uh, you know, managing configuration, you know, bringing up new servers, um, ultimately managing your system, grabbing inventory data, you know, there's certainly a lot of, a lot of use cases for folks that are using PowerShell already, you know, for example, managing their uh, Microsoft infrastructure. We've got some great tie-ins, you know, they, they can use a common library to both manage their, uh, their Microsoft environment and manage their infrastructure, and I think that's where the big value is in having this library. You know, for one, it can, uh, it can automate anything in the UCS system, anything that you might otherwise go to our GUI or CLI for, but you can, uh, you know, basically include that into your scripts that you're already using, and again, manage your your server infrastructure and uh, and and your 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 uh, sorry your operating systems and your in, in your uh, server infrastructure as well. Yeah. So one question I'd ask is, I know a lot of people are probably wanting to automate and and uh, you know the, the installation of an operating system and and configure DNS and DHCP for a particular system. How hard it is to use PowerTool to do bare metal provisioning with. Uh, uh, with things like WDS? Well, we've, you know, we put together some scripts in the past, some methodologies for doing exactly that. Uh, I've got another short video here I'll bring up showing you some examples of what you might do. And uh, these were developed for a recent summit, uh, a Microsoft Management Summit. And again, these scripts that we're using and demonstrating here are available on our community site, which I'm sure we'll be talking about later in the call. So what you see here, uh, is we're leveraging PowerShell, um, you know, to talk to UCS to, uh, in this case, provision a bare metal uh, operating system onto a UCS blade. Um, we're actually integrating with Windows Deployment Services, uh, DHCP, DNS, and then certainly UCS Manager as well. And, and what platform are you running that on with Windows? Are you running it on Windows 2012, or in this case, it looks like 2012? So. Yeah, this is, uh, this is all 2012 in this case. And uh, with WDS, certainly WDS, uh, with uh, Windows 2012, excuse me, WDS becomes a role. Um, we've added a boot image in this case. We've uh, pre-installed the uh, Windows 2012 operating system image into WDS. Uh, we're going through looking at uh, DNS in this case. I've got uh, no DNS entries currently set up. I've got no DHCP reservations currently set up. And what we're doing here is running a script called associate new service profile from template and install Windows 2012. And what it's really doing here is going into the UCS system and deploying a new service profile from a template. And that's basically going to program uh, the x86 server for you and have it pixie booting at the end, at which point WDS uh, will be uh, deploying that OS. Now, what's nice here is we're using our PowerShell library to provision the server and grab identifiers from pools. And then we're going back in with PowerShell to query those, for example, to get the MAC address of the configured server. Uh, and then go back into the other uh, Windows services like DHCP, DNS, uh, create a DHCP reservation, create a DNS record, all pointing to this new server that we're building. And as you can see here, our server is called new server. We, we're leveraging the Active Directory pre-stage device uh, entry in WDS. 
So you're so grabbing the MAC address from the service profile to populate all of the the uh, WDS and, and DHCP uh, uh, items, and grabbing a, an IP address from the, the uh, DHCP pool to populate DNS. So you're basically everything you're doing is building on each step, correct? Exactly. Exactly. And so then we're going to see here a Windows 2012 server. You know, sit, watch the system boot, and then and then fully uh, deploy itself. Exactly. Um, again, uh, this is all kicked off with one script. You know. Um, a great example of using a single, um, you know, command set to both configure and program new servers with all the knobs and wheels turned, formal level set as you would like, uh, and at the re the end result of this script, we've got a you know a fully booted, uh, fully installed bare metal Windows 2012 host running on a UCS blade. No, this is great. So for the for people that want to learn more about this, you definitely want to go to communities.cisco.com/ucs. All of these videos and scripts that we're showing today and and such are available there. That's a big reason why we wanted to kick this uh, technical series off is to get people to come there. So let's switch gears a little bit, Jason, and let's talk about um, monitoring and managing UCS with uh, other things other than just PowerShell. What solutions do we have today to manage UCS directly with System Center 2012? Yeah, we've got some great integrations with all with many of the System Center components. I know you mentioned earlier uh, System Center Operations Manager. Um, you know, that's probably the management pack that we've had the longest. A lot of customers want to use Operations Manager to monitor the UCS hardware. So we've got a great pack that brings all the faults and alerts that you otherwise might have to go into UCS for into Operations Manager and gives you some great tools for tuning um, so that the alerts that you see in Operations Manager are, are actionable events, things that you need, you know, that you want to worry about and, and respond to. So if um, I want to filter things out, if there's you know, severities that come in and there's faults that come in, you know, am I, can I filter things out and reclassify things? Absolutely. We have a management service uh, with a, an agent that we can run on the management server. You can create expressions to, def to uh, either remap re or change the default severities of faults coming in or even to squelch them all together. Okay. Yeah. Uh, second, another great um, tool that we have out there is a UI extension for System Center Virtual Machine Manager. And this uh, provides the SCVMM admin uh, the ability to register a UCS domain and identify for all the hosts that all the Hyper-V hosts they may be managing which of those hosts are running on UCS infrastructure and give them access to uh, controls and information. Uh, for example, the KVM can be opened directly from SCVMM. Uh, that in itself gives you power controls and the ability to get right to the hardware and do uh, troubleshooting. We're also bringing in faults and alerts. Um, that you otherwise, again, might have to go back into another tool for, um, you know, consolidated list of, of uh, firmware levels, and even the ability to, um, to associate new service profiles from template, and ultimately give that SCVMM admin the ability to deploy new servers directly from their tool. So it really gives that same look and feel and, uh, uh, and, and view that you would get with UCSM without having to launch the actual GUI for UCSM. You can stick right into SCVMM and actually be able to, you know, do a lot of the same things you can do in the GUI without leaving SCVMM, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's a very similar look and feel. If, if folks have used the UCS Manager UI to look at server information, look at the server definition info, um, the screen that we open up in SCVMM looks identical. And we're just bringing in the, the actions that make sense for the admin that's that's leveraging this from SCVMM. Oh, great. Yep. Uh, System Center Orchestrator, uh, we have an integration pack for SEO, and again, it's largely leveraging our PowerShell library. We've got a set of, of activities that make sense for stringing together workflows. Uh, we provide a number of default runbooks for common tasks in UCS. So again, I think all the tools you need to manage infrastructure, monitor infrastructure, deploy new infrastructure, uh, and all of our integrations are leveraging our PowerShell library very significantly. Yeah, that's great. Well, hey, Jeff, I want to bring you into the conversation here. Um, you know, I know you, Jeff, you work a lot with our standalone rack mount servers and, and such, and uh, we've done a lot of enhancements around our API with C-Series. Can you let me give give me a little bit of background of what we've done with our XML API and standalone C series, and what are specific, specifically some of the new capabilities that we've added with newer versions of our SimC that's running on those those uh, those particular servers? Sure. So we introduced the uh, XML API for our standalone C series in the Cisco Integrated Management Controller or Cisco or uh, Cisco IMC in version 1.4. 
In version 1.4, those capabilities were primarily read-only. Uh, we recently introduced uh, version 1.5, where we enhanced the XML API and many of the, uh, the configuration options in the Cisco IMC are now read-write attributes in the XML API. So you can uh, do things like set BIOS settings and boot order and whatnot? Exactly. We can set BIOS, we can set boot order, uh, communication services, we can add or modify users, and we can also perform some more advanced capabilities like kick off a, a non-interactive uh, firmware update, uh, attach scriptable vMedia, or even uh, event subscription capabilities. Uh, so we do have, as Jason touched on, uh, a number of integrations that we have for UCS. Uh, with the XML API for our standalone C-Series, we're enabling similar integrations uh, for our rack mount systems as well. So for uh, those who are familiar with UCS Manager and have written used PowerShell or, or used the API to, to do things with UCSM, the, the API with the C-Series servers, is it, is it the same or very similar? You know, how does it differ? It's actually very similar. It's a, it's a subset of the, uh, the UCS uh, XML API, and the learning curve for somebody who's already familiar with UCSM uh, is very, very short. Uh, well, so one thing that Jason talked about was uh, the convert to UCS commandlet available, available for UCS manager monitoring that GUI log file. Are there any similar capabilities for people to be able to, uh, to help them automate C-Series using our XML API? Yeah, so with the, uh, the, the Power Tool library for standalone C-Series, we also have a convert to commandlet. It's structured slightly different because we don't have a Java uh, uh, log file to monitor the session, uh, but it is a, a pipeline-capable commandlet, so we can uh, run a get operation on a particular attribute and then pipeline that to convert to uh, so let me, I want to share with you a sample uh, of this. So what we have here is a couple of standalone C-Series servers, uh, and this is the web uh, UI or the web-based uh, user interface for these systems. And mis many customers today are using this interface to update bio settings. Oh. Sorry. So in this case, a customer would have to go in and configure uh, all of the BIOS tokens uh, that, that match their, uh, their particular application or workload needs. I've got two systems here uh, that have different BIOS configurations. I want to point out the altitude here on this system just because it's something that uh, stands out as 300 meters. And as we log into our second system, I could spend quite a bit of time going back and forth and matching all of the uh, BIOS token values across these two systems. You can see here uh, an example of one difference being the altitude, uh, but there are other differences across these two platforms. Now with uh, Power Tool for Standalone C-Series, we're going to connect to that first system, and we're actually going to, uh, to run a Git UCS C-Series BIOS settings uh, hierarchy, so we're going to get all of the BIOS token values. We're going to convert, run that through the convert to UCS C-Series commandlet and then output that to a BIOS uh, PowerShell. So instead of like with UCS Manager, what you're doing here, you're basically getting, you're, you're going to the web UI, changing things, uh, you know, in the web UI and then doing a get to get all of the values that you just changed, but learning, be able to run that in, you know, pipe that into convert to UCS commandlet to be able to con convert that into how you actually would set that on another system, correct? That, that's exactly right. So what, what you're seeing here are the commandlets that a user would need to run to duplicate the configuration on that first system. So no longer do you have to manually go uh, and, and configure in the web UI. You can actually output the file from one system and then quickly and easily import that to another system. And that's exactly what we're going to do here for a very simple and straightforward example. So we're going to log into that second system, and we're going to take that BIOS.ps1 uh, file, and we're going to import that into this second system. So it's going to run all those commandlets that you just pulled from the, 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 the initial system and then do all the sets 
appropriately for all the BIOS settings to have the BIOS settings from the first system to match exactly the second system, correct? That's exactly right. So we're logging back into the second system here uh, just to do a quick spot check. Uh, and you can see now that the altitude for this, as well as all of the other token values, match the first system. Oh, and as, as we get more and more advanced use cases, uh, you can see how we could leverage this to configure an entire system, not just the BIOS settings. And so if people wanted to learn more about the API, I mean, are there the equivalent programmer's guides and those types of things we have with UCS Manager, are they available for uh, C-Series as well? Absolutely. We have a, a very good uh, XML API programmer's guide for standalone C-Series with dozens of examples. Uh, so there's a, a lot of very good information out there uh, on CDN, and there's also a link on communities.cisco.com uh, slash UCSM. So what other things are we doing with, uh, you know, we talked about PowerShell, but what other things are we doing with System Center for, to, for people to be able to monitor, manage, and orchestrate those standalone rack mount servers with, with System Center? So in addition to uh, the PowerTool beta that's available on CDN, uh, we have a number of other betas available uh, for our System Center integrations. Uh, Jason had touched on a number of them. Uh, first off, I'd like to, uh, to, to circle back to System Center Operations Manager. So we do have a, a beta management pack for, uh, for System Center Operations Manager that's specific to C-Series. So for those customers that are running both UCSM environments as well as uh, standalone C, you can load both management packs and, and have the similar functionality or the same functionality that Jason described earlier. We also have uh, System Center Orchestrator in beta. So for those customers that want to develop their own runbooks, uh, we have that capability now as well as System Center Configuration Manager, uh, where customers can uh, use uh, Configuration Manager to quickly configure a system's uh, 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 RAID controller based on uh, policies defined in, in Configuration Manager, and then deploy a, an operating system and slip, slipstream the driver. So, uh, so you can do things like you know, use PowerShell or PowerTool to configure all the BIOS settings first, and, uh, and, and set your boot order and whatnot, and then flip it over to System Center Config Manager to configure the RAID and, and actually install the operating system and get it up and running correct. That's exactly right. So those two utilities can work hand in hand uh, to take the system from unmanaged to completely managed and deployed. Oh, that's great. What other integrations do we have uh, available that people should know about around C-Series? Anything else that you'd want to comment on? Yeah, so today we've got uh, a couple of utilities that are available on CDN as well as on communities.cisco.com uh, for non-interactive firmware updates. Uh, so we've got a Python-based and a Windows-based utility. Uh, we also have, uh, in development, coming very soon, uh, integrations for HP Operations Manager as well as HP Operations Orchestration as well as a Python library for our standalone C-Series. So uh, this XML API is really opening the doors to advanced management capabilities as well as uh, new integrations. Well, that's great. So I want to uh, move over to Chris Duck and, and get him in, uh, uh, added into the conversation. So Chris, I know you are one of our customers with, uh, with, um, with UCS. And I'm curious, to how long have you guys been a customer for UCS, and why did you choose to switch um, from your, your previous platform to UCS? So we've been a customer uh, for about a year now. Um, we saw an initial presentation on UCS several years ago at a VMUG, and uh, we, we liked the idea of the cleaner cabling and just the general unified management of UCS, but we weren't really moved to, um, to switch platforms at that time. Uh, but once we discovered that PowerShell integration was built into the platform, that was what really pushed us over the edge. Um, we, we're a highly automated shop, so we have PowerShell scripts to do just about everything that we do, and it was really attractive to us to be able to integrate from the hardware level all the way up now through our stack using PowerShell. No, that's great to hear. So how did you, you know, you said you're using PowerShell a lot. I'm assuming you guys are using PowerTool to do a lot of the automation and such. How are you guys utilizing it in your data center to, to deploy, manage, and configure UCS? So we basically did our entire UCS configuration using PowerTool. Um, we're in the process of building out two data centers, 
and uh, we wrote a script to deploy our UCS environment in that first data center. And then um, as we were moving to the second data center, we were able to copy that script and just change the parameters, the VLAN IDs and subnets and whatnot. And um, basically, in the time between building the first data center and moving on to starting to work on the second one, we had that script ready to go. I was able to use the um, emulator, which we haven't talked about yet, but I was able to use the emulator to actually run that second script and test it before we were ready to go. And by the time we had the data center ready and the infrastructure in place, we were able to just log in, run the script, and within about 30 minutes of having our UCS physically plugged in, we were able to have it basically fully configured and ready to, to be used. Oh, that's interesting. So in that script, are you doing everything from you know, configuring all of your all the things on the admin tab, like LDAP settings or syslog settings, SNMP, all the way to creating your pools and policies and VNIC, VHB templates and service profile templates? Yes, we're doing the, the two things that we're not doing. We're not um, automatically provisioning the ports that are physically plugged in. Um, I didn't see a lot of value in spending the time to work on that since that's something we're only going to ever do once, really. Um, and then the, uh, we're going to we're doing the service profile templates, but we're not provisioning any service profiles. So, but basically, yeah, everything else we're ready to go. So you said you um, you were using the emulator to do a lot of your development. Are there any in, you know how are you using the emulator are you, are you, as a new? Are you using it in a way where as a new domain comes up, you're you're emulating the configuration in the emulator to be able to to to, to simulate what you might do when the real hardware comes in. Yeah, so that was one of the, the big use cases for the emulator to start with was we, after we had provisioned our first UCS environment, we were ready to start working on the script for the second one, but we didn't have a UCS environment to test on, so we weren't sure if we had typed everything right in the script and all that kind of things. So the emulator is great because it's a VM that you can just download and run in your VMware environment, and it, it runs the same UCS software that your actual UCS um, environment runs, so you can take that script, connect to the, the emulator, and run it, and just completely trash the emulator. It actually has a great feature that you can, um, you can configure it to reset its configuration on reboot. So you can completely trash it, hit reboot, and it's like you just downloaded it fresh, and you've got a clean slate to start over. You so can do right, really all that right on your laptop, so you don't even have to have, you know, for folks that are wanting to learn UCS, they can really use you know, get the emulator to even, you know, to be able to test out a lot of the same features without having the real hardware in, in your in your shop, correct? Yes, and it has the full GUI, too. So if you're um, even not wanting to use PowerTool, you could still play with the GUI and do your configuration and, and sort of learn, um, learn the UCS tools that way as well. So let's talk a little bit more about how, you know, automation and orchestration with PowerTool fits into your larger automation capabilities. I, I know that, you know, UCS deployment is not the only thing you're doing. So how does how does uh, PowerShell and or sorry PowerTool and even your PowerShell scripting fit into you know probably a larger automation capability? So even before we deployed UCS, we had a script to deploy our ESX servers, um, but there was still a lot of manual steps involved in that. We had to physically go rack the server, which there's a lot of cables involved in an ESX rack. Um, and then we would also have to copy the MAC address off of that so that we could stage it in our WDS environment. And then also grab the worldwide names to get to our SAN guys so that they could go out and um, do all the zoning and stuff. So um, after we got UCS in, we integrated the UCS parts um, into that existing script. So now what we have is basically a single command line that we can run that provisions our ESX, a new ESX server end to end. So we just go throw a blade in a chassis and then go run this one command line and walk away and come back in 30 minutes and we have basically an ESX server ready to go. All we, the, the only manual steps that we have after that are to drag it into the cluster that we want it in and then take it out of maintenance mode and it's it's completely ready to go. So, so you're, you're really you know being able to do you know a few seconds of work and and step away go grab a cup of coffee and let the the scripts and do and such do all your automation for you and it's consistent every single time so every time you do a new build you're not going to have well this guy's a little bit different than the the next and such 
Exactly. We, our, our SAN guy actually wrote a, a module in PowerShell to manage our three-part SAN. So we're able to pull the list of, um, of LUNs that have been exposed to our existing ASX servers and exactly copy those so that we know that the new server has exactly the same set of LUNs. Um, the same thing, since we're using UCS um, and we're using a service profile template, that actually has our uh, VLAN trunks defined in the uh, service profile template. So we know that since we're applying the same template that we've used for our other ESX servers, we know that we're getting the same trunks on all of the same NICs. So we don't have to worry about someone fat fingering a VLAN or forgetting one or something and ending up with a server that's slightly different than everybody else. And then and secondly, if, if you add new VLAN trunks to your environment, and you have to usually do that at the, uh, at, the, at the UCS level and your hypervisor level. Are, are you using PowerShell to automate those type of tasks as well to make sure they're being added uh, correctly across all your different hypervisors and your clusters? Yeah, so for the UCS piece, we actually go and modify that original script that we used to provision the, the UCS environment from the beginning, and we just rerun that section that does the VLANs. So we go in and add the new VLAN and then rerun just that section. It adds it to the service profile templates, which gets the trunks defined for the hardware. And then we just run another script that basically gets all of our vSwitches and then adds a new um, port group with that VLAN tag on it. So it takes about three minutes. Oh, interesting. So you're being able to do, you're using Power CLI for VMware and, and Power Tool together to be able to, uh, to do a lot of that automation. That's, that's yeah. really cool. So what things, uh, what tips and tricks would you recommend for a new person uh, uh, learning Power Tool and learning UCS and how to automate? I mean, you, you guys have been using UCS for a year, and there, you must have hit some stumbling blocks and things that you would recommend people to learn to avoid, or or, or things that really helped you learn quickly. Uh, uh, you know, Power Tool and UCS. What might, advice might you give? So my advice would be not to be afraid of the command line. First of all. Um, it's a great tool. It allows you to um, keep your environment in sync, and it, it, there's a lot of power in being able to run commands across your entire environment and get everything done just, uh, you know, at the drop of a hat. Um, and then use the PowerShell built-in commands of git help and git command. That'll that really allows you to discover within the tool that you're using um, a lot of the the commands that are available from from UCS and all your other tools. That's one of the great things about PowerShell is that it, it builds in a lot of the help that you would need, um, and it's automatic. It's there automatically. So um, the same way that you get help with, um, with PowerCLI is the same way you get it with the Power Tool for UCS. It's the same way you get it for all of the Microsoft tools. It's all the same. So you didn't use convert to UCS command to learn our PowerShell library? I haven't really used it that much, no. Um, I... There's a feature in the GUI where you can right-click and see the XML that uh, any particular item represents, and the XML elements are generally the name of the the noun that's used in the in the UCS tool. So I, I use that um, basically to sort of get familiar with it and just kind of discover which commands you would run to manipulate different pieces of of the environment. Did you use the the the, met, the convert to, sorry the get UCS command metadata to learn how the different commandlets can be pipelined or those types of things or did you I'm just curious did you end up using those type of commandlets as well? To learn? No, not really. Just just the built-in um, just get command really and get help from PowerShell. No, that's great. I mean, it's a it's a good testimonial how you know someone can come up to speed even without you know letting convert to UCS convert to UCS command let write the code for them that you know, you, you just kind of learned the Power Tool library just like you would learn any other Power Tool library. So, and curious uh, with the 1700 commandlets, was that a little daunting to learn, or you know, did you really feel that you found the commandlet you needed pretty quickly by doing the copy XML capability? I could find most of what I needed. Um, it's sort of a mixed blessing. You have the the giant list of stuff that you have to wade through, but it also means that everything you need is going to be there. So it, it's kind of exciting to you know when I ran it the first time, the git command with the module and just saw all the commands that were listed. It was like wow. But on the other hand, you know that's that's great because you know that whatever you need is going to be in there somewhere. You just got to find it. Yeah, that's great. That's really great to hear. Do you have any other uh, comments or things you'd like to 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 you know? Give people uh, uh, that are listening. So if you're just getting started with PowerShell, PowerShell.org is a great uh, community site for just PowerShell. Um, and then the Cisco community site also has a lot of UCS-specific content. So those are great resources to utilize. No, that's great. So let's um, we'll switch over to, to, to Chris Shockey. So 
Chris. Um, I know you've been working a lot with uh, with uh, you know, Microsoft since you're in our one of in, in Cisco's advanced services organization. We've been working with them as a customer of, of Cisco. How has PowerTool changed the way you work with Microsoft and the system and the other customers you work with globally? Mm, that's a good question. Well, so within Cisco Advanced Services, the consultant group I represent, PowerTool has become an absolute necessity in managing our large UCS environments here at Microsoft and with our customers globally. Basically, because the first for the first time we have programmatic access to hardware, not just from a configuration management perspective, but also from an incident and change management perspective. So within our tool, we can code automation tasks within minutes as opposed to within minutes or hours, really. Um, these scripts affect information gathering and change within the environment within minutes instead of days or within hours. Um, and I really can't stress more that having programmatic access to hardware, which is really the significant difference here with our tool versus other OEM manufacturers, um, increases our ability to automate change in informational tasks. It's always been it's always been relatively simple to automate operating system tasks um, or have PowerShell access into those automating uh, into those uh, or having operating system sorry an application access um, via PowerShell or automation tasks within a Windows type environment. But hardware access has been totally off the table. So what type of things do you do from a, like, when you get UCS to do those day zero type tasks, that initial configuration? What are you guys automating um, and what, what kind of data are you pulling out and those types of things? Well, from a day zero perspective, um, like Jason Shaw showed as an example, we do automated um, server builds for our large scale Windows based deployments. Um, by using Power Tool along with Windows 2012, and System Center 2012, we have the ability to fully automate not only day zero build of servers, but we can also integrate post OS type configuration tasks by utilizing information that we have within UCSM Manager. So having that access to basically a live configuration management database within UCSM um, significantly increases our ability to automate post OS installation tasks um, within the operating system. An example is identifying network interfaces on an operating system and configuring them. This includes like IP configuration and network interface rename. This is a simple example, but it represents activity that in the past was so time consuming you couldn't actually do it. Um, but now by having the access, the API access to the hardware information, basically Mac based information and UUID information, we can do these tasks simply by, with, by having a live configuration management database of our hardware uh, configuration items. So what you're doing then is basically going to look at the service profile and saying, okay, here are all the network interfaces that we have defined in the service profile, going to your Windows 2012 server and saying, here's all this, the NICs that the Windows, Windows sees and being able to have the, you know, just to do a simple rename of the interface and then, you know, see, this MAC address is, e or is NIC 0, this MAC address is NIC 1, et cetera, defined in UCS, and be able to rename to have the common name between UCS Manager and Windows 2012 so you know exactly what's, where, you know, what's what when you're going from UCSM to Windows 2012. That's what you're doing, correct? Yeah, and you know, another way to look at this too is if you think about it, without an operating system on the physical hardware, in order for me to do just that task, just Windows NIC renaming, because I have no identifying information about that server yet until I have an operating system on it. I would have to wait for the OS to come up or I would need somebody to manually input every MAC address that was already on that server. Whether that's feasible or not, before I could even attempt to do NIC type renames. And if I'm taking that manual information, let's say I'm putting it in a database or an Excel spreadsheet, what if NICs move? Well, there's a whole bunch of change things that can happen over a five year IT life cycle where it just doesn't make that plausible to have a stale information database of, in this case, MAC address. But with UCS, you have a live information database. Even if a NIC change or an adapter change, the MAC addresses are going to either A, follow that server, or they're going to get rediscovered as new MAC addresses, and you can simply run these PowerShell script again. And since pulling the live MAC address information from UCS, you're always going to have a reliable. You're always going to have a reliable script that's going to be 
when it runs its automation tasks, it's always going to be putting the correct information in the operating system. For really large IT environments, is absolutely critical. There can't ever be stale information that you're using to automate tasks. No, that's fair. I mean, so um, what type of things are you know? You talked about a lot of the initial configuration. How are you using Power Tool and System Center and the tools that Cisco's built to be able to accomplish you know uh, cost, uh, time savings, and automation on those day two types of tasks? Those things that you're going to be doing as the uh, along the longer life cycle of that particular server and in the data center. Right. Well. I mean, the amount of tasks that we need to accomplish for these really large environments day to day within Microsoft is vast. But for simplicity's sake, let's just say they fall into three kind of basic categories. We've got configuration management, we've got change management, and we've got incident management. Um, so let's see. So from a configuration management perspective, we use, use Power Tool to gather information about existing services and ensure that that configuration is common across the fabric interconnect domains. Um, and this, you know, this comes back to my original statement for um, having a live configuration database about your IT infrastructure. It's one of the hardest things that I personally have been dealing with from an operations perspective for a decade. And UCS is kind of that first time where I can get both standalone server and blade server information and have that consolidated into one configuration database. And from an ITIL perspective, that's super important because your foundation is built off having that information live and having it relevant. Then from a, you know, if we look at it from um, a change management perspective, we use a combination, a power tool, Windows 2012, and System Center 2012 to coordinate changes between the entire IT infrastructure. Um, saying that, the ability to use a common scripting language, PowerShell, between hardware, the operating system, and server applications is obviously incredibly powerful. Um, you know, in a Windows in the past, pre two or you know pre two thousand eight, and really even pre Windows two thousand twelve, all we had was VB Script, uh, and it wasn't nearly as powerful as Bash or a Perl or the things that you may have on a Unix or Linux side. Uh, but now with two thousand twelve, Microsoft has a directive for all of its server applications, not only the operating system to have PowerShell interfaces. So for things like System Center, Hyper-V, SQL, Exchange, we all have PowerShell interfaces into it now. So now from a pre-OS configuration all the way to the post-OS configuration, I can have a common scripting language across all of them. And then for a more professional coding level, that's when we move into, let's say, an orchestrator, where we start taking the scripts that we've used to automate, we want to put them into a more professional code, um, system, we can use Orchestrator and use our um, the Cisco Orchestrator integration pack um, to do those tasks. Well, let's take a and, concrete example of something you did. I know um, we something that we showed at MMS that you had worked with Microsoft on was where you're using UCS Power Tool and um, and, and System Center Virtual Machine Manager to do bare metal you know deployment. Like Chris Duck was mm -hmm. talking about some of the deployment that he's developed um, with with VMware. What have you done and what's available, you know, like out on our community's website um, to actually do some of the same type of functions but for a Hyper-V environment? Sure. Well, so what I did was I wrote a script that um, is very simple but will get all of your power tool configuration or get all your bare metal OS install done if you're using Virtual Machine Manager 2012 SP1. And what it does is it's going to go out to UCS, you point it towards UCS IP, and it's going to enumerate all the orgs that you have. And then it's going to check, it's, then you're also going to give it a virtual machine manager IP, and it's going to check that virtual machine manager instance. And then it's going to go through all the servers and then marry up the UUIDs, which is the unique GUID identifier of a server, with the UUIDs that are in virtual machine manager. If they don't exist, it's going to use the um, UCSM IPMI interface to go out and contact that server insert it into WDS, reboot the server, and get it built out bare metal and into that VMM instance. So basically, it's like a sync tool. So it'll sync any UCS FI domain to any virtual machine manager instance. So if the machine already exists, it's not going to rebuild it, but if the machine doesn't exist, it'll bring it back up. It'll bare metal it, bring it up, and make it available for use in the VMM. And that's out on the side, I, I believe. Yeah, that's out on communities.cisco.com uh, slash UCS. It's called uh, 
you know, it's one of the uh, documents that I put up yesterday. So that, that's a script that's available that anyone can use to, to be able to do that, the synchronization of service profiles that are in UCS Manager, make sure they're, uh, they, they have basically an equivalent Hyper-V host into SCVMM, and if they're not, then they, like you said, would do a full bare metal installation and install the Hyper-V role and those types of things so you can start putting virtual machines on it, you know. Correct? That's right. And there is some, you have a WD assistance. Um, the script will configure the IPMI connectivity between VMM and UCSM, but you have to allow it, um, and you have to have VMM 2012 SP1. But it will build out 2008 R2 and 2012. So what tips and tricks would you recommend for somebody new coming up to you learning um, you know, Power Tool and System Center, uh, the tools that we have with UCS? Anything that you would you want to leave with everyone listening? Yeah, so Definitely use convert to UCS commandlet when you're starting, but have a good UI. Um, Microsoft has a really decent um, um, IDE, which is an independent development environment, but um, I really like powergui.org. So if they have a they have the PowerShell script editor, um, I definitely recommend using PowerGUI. It's free and uh, it can be downloaded off of powergui.org. Um, that's what I do all my development in. Oh, and uh, definitely use convert to UCS commandlet. And uh, if you're on Windows 2012, uh, make sure that you're using, uh, when you're opening up powergui.org or if you're using uh, some other ID, that you're opening up those IDs in uh, PowerShell 3.0 mode. And then you'll be good to go. Oh, that's great. So, Joe, uh, I know you work in the field with, uh, with Cisco. I'd be curious to get a perspective from you of, of you know, how, what do you show to newer customers to provide proof points on the value of UCS and using, uh, you know, our API and, and, and tools from System Center? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm fortunate that I'm, I'm out here with Chris Shockey. So when I joined the team, um, you know, I was able to uh, start my learnings from him, get a bunch of sample scripts. So I ended up uh, kind of showing a bunch of those things like Nick Rename and things like that to show the power. But where it really comes together is as I'm sitting down with my customer, and saying let's let's configure your UCS system is I built a configuration worksheet which has now become an answer file and so I work with them and say okay you've got these fabric interconnects what ports are going to be server ports uh, northbound uplink ports SAN ports uh, are you doing port channeling how do we want to set up your pools your policies your templates all of that and we, we run that through this answer file and now when we actually go to deploy um, I can run that against their system and I can have a UCS system up in just a matter of minutes. It includes everything from, you know, once you've said, hey, here are the server ports, the system has to go in and do chassis discovery, find the blades, add the inventory. So the logic in the script actually does all of that waiting, looping for that stuff to get done so it can automatically answer, you know, add servers to the proper pools. And they can see how they can turn up one server or quite frankly, you know, 160 servers in just a matter of minutes. And so that one is a, a pretty wow factor to get people saying, yeah, I need to start looking at this type of tool and using this to automate and go forward and really free up my time from being 90% reactive, keeping the lights on to um, kind of a, a getting to a proactive environment. So is that something that's available publicly or something we can add to our community website to, to, so other folks can be able to utilize as well? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I've been keeping those kind of close to the vest so far, but uh, uh, I've been convinced that uh, it's worth getting those out there on community. So I have a whole list of, of scripts that I've been writing uh, for various uses for my customers and we'll get those posted. Oh, great. So we'll get those here in the next uh, day or so added to communities. Just another reason to, to go out to communities for folks. So um, how did you get started with PowerTool? I know, you know, in, 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 in being in, as a, a CSE at, uh, at, at Cisco, you, you've got a lot of things, you know, a lot of things moving around. How did you get in, started with PowerTool and, uh, in, in that environment? Well, it, it started out, you know, I'm on the pre-sale side, right? So I'm the PowerPoint guy. I'm up talking about UCS. But I'm fortunate that I'm dedicated to Microsoft. So uh, anytime somebody at Microsoft says they're going to buy a UCS system, you know, I'm an engineer. I love doing real engineering and not just PowerPoint work. So I actually go out and install their UCS system for them. That's why I wrote the Day Zero config script. But uh, it was one of those things that I'd been putting off for quite a while because there was just so much going on in my role. 
until the following occurred. We uh, we had a group that was buying UCS. They were going to be deploying multiple UCS systems, and we brought in their complete operations group. We're talking about one of the highest level teams uh, out here at Microsoft, and we put them through the four-day UCS training class put on by one of our training partners. And a challenge came up as they were learning about UCS, and that was, hey, this is great that UCS has integrated IPKVM inside it. But this manager was saying, I have this guy who's sitting at a desk. He's just an operator. And I tell him, go into host XYZ via KVM because we're having problems, say, with networking. RDP is not working. And I need you to do the following. could be as simple as just go reboot this box. And he said to me, as I'm learning here, the IPKVM is, is, is really isolated per UCS system. How does that operator know which UCS system to go into? And so you go, so I think your system has some flaws. Is, is really the way you put it. So I, I took it upon myself to say it's time to really learn PowerShell. And it was one of these things that literally overnight, and I'm not joking, in 24 hours, um, I came back to him the very next day in class and said, let me demonstrate this to you. And it was an application that takes basically a, you know, a common delimited list of all of their UCS systems, um, goes in and logs into them, provides on the screen a list of all of the service profiles with user labels and descriptions, which can, you know, normally you're, you have your host name match your service profile name, but if it doesn't, the user label has that information. And once it presents it, it pops up a GUI screen of an alphabetical listing of all UCS hosts across all UCS systems, and the, the operator literally just clicks this, launches it, it provides the list, they click on the one they want, hit launch, KVM pops up for it, this customer was so impressed, this manager who was pretty negative to start with, asked me to stop class, interrupt the instructor, demonstrate this. Um, this was found to be so valuable, the instructor saw this. He has now, this instructor, has now created a UCS PowerShell Power Tool class that his company offers over like a WebEx, where he gives homework assignments and builds up to where they actually do things like build this script. Um, and so that's how I got kind of forced into it, and since then I've gone gangbusters. No, that's that's great to hear. I mean, um, so what other things? Uh, what other power tool scripts have you written, and what else have you found valuable? Well, um, for example, uh, one of my teammates had another prospective customer again, kind of a pre-sales, where he said, "Hey, I've got this environment of competitor product. I'll I'll maybe leave the name out. It just it's a two-letter you know uh, uh, acronym for their name." And in their environment, they've got these big data centers, hundreds of servers down rows and rows uh, and racks and racks in the data center, and they would have to send somebody out into the data center to walk the aisle to basically find where is an open slot to slide in a new blade, and then does that chassis from that competitor, does it support that new blade? And they were having to do a lot of manual work to figure that stuff out. So he came to me knowing that I'd gotten into PowerShell, and again, it was literally a overnight uh programmatic thing that I did where I wrote a script that logs into all of a bunch, whole bunch of UCS systems. It then um, provides uh, on an output file a list of all the UCS systems, what version they're running, uh, what the chassis are, and within the chassis, since there's a u user label description, you provide in the user label like a data center rack and row, and then it provides an inventory of all of the slots that are available on all of the chassis. So now they get an output file that says, you know, go to data center three, you know, row seven, rack 12, chassis five, and there's going to be an open slot, and that is capable of running your blade because we know what the firmware version is um, in that UCS system. No, that's great. Um, I'm curious, um, you know, we've talked about the emulator. Uh, and I know at Microsoft, uh, VMware is probably a, a little bit of a bad term, to, and ESX is a bad term. Uh, do you, do, do, have you had any problems running the emulator on Hyper-V um, and, and, and using that in, the, in your development of your scripts? Not at all. Um, it's very simple. There's free tool, which is documented um, actually in the, uh, the documentation for emulator. It allows you to quickly convert the VMDK from, um, from Hyper-V to a VHD file, um, and another script that I'll post for you guys is one that automatically creates, in PowerShell, automatically creates the Hyper-V virtual machine for you. So you don't have to manually go in and say, I want this many NICs and all of that. I've already pre-written that so I can distribute that on campus and it's been working great. And actually testing 
things like that available slot script. I ran that against a real system plus like four emulators running side by side on a UCS blade. Oh, that's great. I, 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 thanks, thanks a lot for all everyone's feedback. Um, I know we're, we're coming to the close of the hour, but I just wanted to make mention that um, that uh, you know these particular tech these uh, communities. Uh, UCS Community's technical series is something we're going to start doing every month. So uh, we're going to start posting when these will be, you know, will these be coming out. And we're going to do you know different tech series, things like for UCS Central and and potentially going deeper dive into Power Tool and whatnot. So please go out to communities.cisco.com/ucs. Look out and, and and watch out for any of our next particular series that are coming up, because you know we're really trying to provide a lot of good detail and a lot of good information um, out on our community's website. So the more people that would come and be able to provide information, no matter if you're a Cisco employee or a customer or partner, that would be great. So I want to say thank everyone on our uh, on our panel here, Chris Duck, Chris Shockey, Jason Shaw, Jeff Foster, and Joe Martin for their time and effort on this. And I really appreciate it. And, and everyone that was watching, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I hope everyone has a good day, and thank you very much.